Good afternoon, good morning, everyone. And as Michelle mentioned, my name is Simon Bolt. I'm the Senior Regional Director here for V Technologies. Um, we do appreciate the time uh, this afternoon uh, spending with us learning a little bit more about um, Starship Cloud, but more importantly, how we um, what makes Starship Cloud sort of stand out um, and, and why cloud is even important in this day and age that we're all living in. So um, I do have a quick agenda I'm going to put up here and then we'll jump right into the presentation. Um, so again, what are some of the key challenges that um, you all might be facing uh, by using an on-prem environment today? Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that, what we see out there in the industry um, with other customers, um, so and what they're experiencing and why they're making the move over to cloud. Um, and then why are customers beginning that journey today, right? Cloud, um, the digital transformation, as they call it, uh, has been really around now for quite quite amount of time, right? And we're sort of that phase now where we're kind of turning, uh, I like to say we're kind of in that uh, um, flip phone to smartphone digital phase, right? Where we're kind of transitioning right over to the cloud world. So why are some of those customers starting that journey today? Um, and what are they seeing the benefits of cloud overall? Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the differences between the two solutions when it comes to Starship, like on-prem and cloud. Um, I do have a bullet in here because a lot of you have been hearing from us regarding OAuth 2.0 uh, from UPS and FedEx. I'll give a quick update on that and where we stand there. Um, and we'll talk about, you know, if you are interested, sort of what the next steps look like, what's involved from making that uh, jump from your current on-prem to the cloud application. Uh, and then we'll talk and wrap up here with some implementation options you all have, and then we'll open it up to Q&A, okay? So um, first and foremost, some of the key challenges uh, with on-prem environments. You know, and these are coming either from customers, just the industry itself, from other solutions, right? And what, you know, folks have experienced. But number one is really uh, important, cost of hardware replacement. Um, many of you are running Starship either on its own server, uh, maybe on the server with the ERP. Uh, that server um, does have to get upgraded every few years, right? Uh, that is not something you buy once and it lasts for 20, 25 years, unfortunately. Um, and those servers can range anywhere from a couple thousand dollars from a very basic server, um, upwards of 20 plus thousand dollars um, on more complex servers. So they can be very costly. So when we look at the transition to our cloud solution, uh, we do like to make, you know, call this out because this is a cost that you may not see every year, uh, but every four or five years, you may see this come up um, and this needs to be sort of factored into that equation. Um, additional expenses, things like electricity to run those servers locally, insurance, you know, the building, the equipment, right? Cybersecurity is a big one these days. We all live through with ransomwares, uh, I have mentioned this in calls. I've been on with customers where we've experienced, some of our customers unfortunately have experiences themselves in which Starship needed to be set up from scratch again. Um, so again, this is a scary um, you know, proposition to call out, but um, any software that you're, you're spending on to protect you from it is also not listed here, but it also has a cost associated to it. So um, do wanna make sure that we're looking at all the expenses uh, when we look at that migration. Um, and then IT maintenance, right? Um, all the computing, the memory or storage of the upgrades, right? Multiple updates throughout the year on all applications, right? You don't just load up one version today and then run with that for five years. Um, in order to keep up with all the new features and enhancements on any software application, you need to keep up with all the upgrades. Starship launches a new version every single month most customers might take three to four upgrades in the course of a year, right, that we've seen. So those upgrades can be very costly. Um, if you have our team do them, they can be also costly to your team doing them because it's gonna take time of your IT staff to run those upgrades, shut down the operation for maybe a few hours while that update happens or do it off hours. But either way you look at it, there's a cost involved of doing that uh, upgrade those uh, times that you need to do them. Um, network being down, um, we've seen this happen where a local network may crash. Um, what's that response time? Especially if you're using an outside IT firm, um, you may run into issues where you might be down for an extended period of time. Um, that you eliminate, right, uh, with using a cloud environment where it's being monitored 24 seven 
um, and its uptime is 99.8% you know, uptime at all times because it's running up in Microsoft's uh, environment. So again, having that local network is always a concern. Um, and what do you do if it does crash and what the business do overall is plan B. Um, you're removing really access, you're removing access um, to um, uh, VPNs, RDP connections, right? All of those um, connections you may have today to, to work remotely um, go away when you're using a cloud application. Um, these also have a cost associated to maintaining them uh, and ensuring that users can connect when they need to connect. Um, whereas you're in the cloud environment, all of that goes away by simply logging in through a, a web portal, right? Um, just like you would with any website that you access today. Um, and you can basically get, you know, data that you need uh, at any point in time of the day. So, um, again, accessibility to your data today is also difficult to get to because of these firewalls, because of these connections not being readily available, right? Especially for those senior level folks who might need access to certain data, they can't easily get that uh, by using an on-prem environment. And then relocation, right? So if you are looking to relocate, right, um, and taking all of your hardware with you, it becomes very costly. It could take up to several months, right, to get the new hardware in place, get it all in, uh, installed, configured, right? We have loss of revenue we need to worry about, right, because of that uh, move that's happening. Again, cloud, you can pick up today and be up and running tomorrow, right? Um, that's the nice uh, benefit of that when you're relocating. Uh, but we have seen this uh, as well with certain customers who physically needed to move multiple servers, workstations, you name it, right? And have that uh, issue happen to them where they're down for like over a week because they're trying to get everything implemented um, at the new facility. So why do we talk about cloud, right? Why is this big thing? conversation happening all around all of us today right again as i mentioned there's 24 7 monitoring um the reduction in it expenditures right so we don't need to worry about all those unnecessary upgrades with cloud everything is pushed out automatically right so when you log in the very next morning it's like nothing's ever happened the business isn't down right you can operate just like you were yesterday uh, on the old version um, you also don't need to uh, call those outside IT firms in to do these upgrades or migrations or anything that is unnecessary. That is all done by basically a push out overnight. Um, so you don't need to worry about um, having that um, to be done for you or spending that money where that can be spent elsewhere in other IT related projects for you. Um, you can have control, better control on user permissions with our cloud application, right? So here, everything is a named user, so we can set specific permissions, we can set specific roles um, to each user, so they can do certain tasks. Um, you don't want to give everybody in the company admin access, clearly. Um, so you can design this however you want and give maybe a shipper access to only looking at some reports and shipping whereas someone in the front office might be only a rate shopper or be able to run a dashboard um, for their viewing pleasure. Um, so you have that full control as admin uh, to give those users those types of permissions. You can scale this, you can start a plan as low, very low and work your way all the way to the top. Um, you can add on as you go, right? There's no requirements here of, I need to build everything up front right this is a scalable solution right so if you're going to expand and add new locations or add new options or features you have that capability here in our cloud environment um, <clears throat> you also have the ability of accessing it anytime anywhere right um, you basically you know it could be at home you could be traveling you'd be in the office again being a fully cloud solution you can access this without any remote connections needed like an RDP or VPN connection as well. And then lastly, um, increased margins, right? Basically here we're talking about because we don't have all these um, unnecessary expenses, right? You have that to put into other areas of the business, right? Now your margins can increase because again, we're not worried about spending that on Starship necessarily uh, because Starship's gonna be kind of more of an all-inclusive solution uh, when you look at the cloud application altogether. So um, again, main differences between the two, right? What you might be using today with on-prem versus cloud, 
right? So here we're looking at the cloud solution. You have um, uh, access to basically all of our carrier modules and as well as unlimited users. Um, you have a fully redesigned dashboard and analytics tools, right, available to you, uh, where some of you might be using desktop today, uh, in which our dashboard is non-existent, right? Um, here you have things like a heat map, you have things like specific charts to look at, very quick trends of how things are, you know, um, uh, working from week to week, month to month. Um, you can drill into deeper reports if you wanted to. So a lot of information has been put into this new dashboard. So you have that access and you don't need to worry about contacting your carrier reps or other folks in the business. You can do it all with a click of a button. Um, receiving a 15% discount right, uh, or greater depending on any specific promotions running on annual subscriptions, right? So with on-prem, you're paying us uh, those increased costs every year for those maintenance fees. Um, whereas the cloud, we're actually discounting uh, those renewals, right? Uh, by 15% uh, to keep you up and running and making sure you're taking advantage of the full benefit that the cloud offering offers you. <clears throat> we talked about the automatic upgrades already, right? So we don't need to plan this out. This is just gonna happen when we tell you, hey, on Saturday, you know, X and X date, um, an update is available. When you come in Monday morning, right, you are gonna see that uh, Starship is ready to go, right? And we don't need to worry about planning or keeping users out of the application. They can all log back in and, and ship like normal uh, on that Monday morning. Uh, we do support multi-location and multiple company setups here, right? So that is something we do experience quite a bit with a lot of users. So that is supported just like it is with on-prem. Um, and then again, the last bullet here, it's always on the latest version, right? We never have to worry about um, you being on a version, say a year for old or two years old, right? And not taking advantage of some of the new features we put into the product. The cloud solution is our front runner right now. Um, as far as solutions go, it has all the new features being put into it, all new enhancements being put into it, um, especially with all these new, uh, requirements by the carriers, right? Uh, along with you know the new REST APIs coming out uh, with new uh, features included in them. So again, you definitely want to take advantage of the cloud if you can. Um, so that way you can you know take advantage of the wonderful features being put into the product. So I'm going to take a moment and just talk about um, the uh, OAuth 2.0 between UPS and FedEx that you all might have been hearing about from us or by the carrier reps. Um, so UPS um, has been really the dominant one here um, on this. Um, they initially had put a date out there of June 1st, uh, then they extended that out to June 30th, and then just recently they moved this out to August 3rd um, for users to basically be authenticated um, with their new OAuth requirements. In order for you to do so, you must be on version 2402 or higher um, to be eligible. And then you must um, authenticate inside of the web client application, which is the same application we use in the cloud, right? So if you are not going to move to the cloud, we recommend that you install the web client so you can do the OAuth process prior to August 3rd. Um, so you are um, uh, all set to go and UPS uh, doesn't stop to work for you or anything like that uh, after the August 3rd date. The other option you have is to move to cloud, right? And in the cloud application, you will be asked to authenticate through the new OAuth process, right? And that will uh, be your new solution moving forward um, versus using the on-prem instance. Um, FedEx change, um, this one had a date uh, all along of August 31st, um, but just recently in some meetings we were in with FedEx, um, because we are a compatible solution, um, they have pushed out OAuth requirements back to 2025. Uh, for all um, customers using a compatible solution like Starship. Um, so that deadline has been postponed. Um, they are targeting uh, probably mid to late next year before these requirements will be needed to be met. So we do have a little bit of a break uh, for FedEx and we don't need to worry about the August 31st deadline right now. Okay. So just a few things I thought you should all know and be aware of, right? Um, so if you are using our desktop client today, um, we do not have any new features or enhancements being put into that application today. Um, and there won't be any going in the future. Uh, that is very important uh, for you all to know. 
Um, if you are going to remain on-prem and not make a transition to cloud, say today or in the near future, the recommendation is to be at least on the web client application on-prem, right? So you can take advantage of the same features and enhancements being put into the cloud on the web client as well. And the reason for this is that the desktop does run on old code um, that no developers support any longer. So that, um, you know, is very difficult for us, right? Obviously to make any of those changes, uh, but more importantly, any bug fixes are also being done in the web client application and not in the desktop. So if you do run into instances in the future where desktop stops to work or creates a bug or anything like that, you will need to start using the web client application at that point. Uh, for that fix, um, just to, you know, pull that out of here, right, and call that out, because a lot of customers get a little confused um, in that regard, so I do want to make mention of that, that no fixes are being done in the desktop client uh, going forward here. Um, also, annual fees, annual maintenance fees, um, right, you, um, <clears throat> they get you access to support to troubleshoot issues only, again, for desktop clients, so again, one call out here I do want to make is that you are paying a maintenance fee, some of you higher than others, depending on what's on your license. But again, you're only getting access to support by paying that fee right now. You are not getting any additional features or enhancements into the product. So again, the best thing to do is either migrate to the web client or jump over to the cloud application so you can take advantage of those features and get what you're, you know, deserve to get by paying those types of fees uh, that you're paying today. Uh, do not compare current maintenance fees to cloud subscription. Um, this is probably one of the biggest callouts I'll make in this entire presentation. Um, over the last uh, several years, as we've been talking to a lot of users, migrating them to cloud, um, the first question we may get is looking at their current maintenance fees versus what the cloud subscription fee gets you. Um, one thing to note is you're limited in what you get with your maintenance fee. And that, what I mean by that, is that you're only um, limited to what's on your license. So if you only have UPS and FedEx, or if you have one user seat, um, that is what you're getting and that's what you're paying for. With the cloud application, you're getting access to, as I mentioned earlier, all of the carriers, unlimited user access, support access, um, upgrades, right? All of those inclusive every month, right? You don't have those options, those added on cost in the future. So if you needed to add a user or a module, or pay for an upgrade, there's no surprise cost with cloud, right? You pay a little bit more um, each year, right? But that is all inclusive um, versus paying a la carte and spending thousands of dollars extra if you stayed on-prem. And we'll talk more about that um, as we go and we speak to you. So, um, and current maintenance fees, right, that you're paying um, are due to increase about 15 to 25% annually. That is just a standard industry number, right, that is used. Uh, but you, some of you probably have seen that already. Um, some of you may even seen some higher increases over the last few years, right? But that is typical what we can expect to see going forward with on-prem. So in the next few years, you know, you're gonna see cloud subscription fees be very comparable right, to what your maintenance fees are you're paying today, but you're also getting a lot more for it, okay? So for those of you who haven't seen our new web UI, for those who haven't seen the cloud application yet, I have taken a couple screenshots just to share with you of what the new application does indeed look like that you would be using um, here. But this is our main shipping screen. Um, one thing to call out here is that you do have um, you don't have the tabs across the top any longer, right? Where you got to click through to get a rate shop. Everything is on one page here. So you work top to bottom, right? All your ship to, ship from is at the top. Your rate shop is at the bottom. You would hit ship and process at the very bottom right <laughs> to print your label. Um, and that's it, right? We don't need to click through multiple tabs here um, to get to the final destination, which is, you know, we feel is much more simplistic. Um, and it's easier on the eyes to do it this way versus not seeing all the information in front of you on each of the tabs. Um, one of the things that I mentioned earlier was our dashboard analytics tool. Um, this is a quick snapshot of what the main page looks like if you set it up this way, um, but this will show you all your distribution points there on the left in the map, right, where your hot zones are. I like to call that out because this helps for negotiation purposes helps for relocation or expansion purposes, 
of where your customers are actually residing. Um, you can drill into this and add multiple filters. So if you want to look at individual carriers or where you're shipping to, you can do that as well. Um, you can also see things like your package counts, your LTL shipment counts, right? Trends by user, you know, how many, you know, of all my users shipping, who's doing what um, kind of thing to make sure that everybody's being utilized the way they should. Um, maybe things like, you know, what are my, you know, services that I'm using? So if it does come time for negotiations, you can see here in the map on the lower left, right? That UPS ground is my heavy dominated carrier in the light green, but maybe I want to, you know, negotiate some better rates with FedEx, right? Well, FedEx needs to sharpen their pencil if they want this type of business. So you have the detail in front of you here, right? To get access to, so you're not kind of working that blindly, right? And then from there, you can drill into some more detailed reports to get some more information around these packages or LTL shipments you're doing, uh, maybe costs associated uh, with these shipments so you can make sure that you're not losing money in shipping or anything like that. So having this intel is very helpful to a lot of businesses. Probably one of my favorite things of Starship altogether uh, is the information we provide um, versus just printing a standard shipping label, right? Um, so there's, because there's other solutions that do that, most solutions don't provide information or intel um, of your shipments the way we do. And then one of the other screenshots I took is the e-notify tool that's built in for Starship. Um, so this is just a way to customize templates, right? To send out to your customer so they can see kind of what their, you know, tracking numbers are, the items being shipped in a specific box, PO numbers, pretty much whatever you want to add in here is available, right? You want to put a logo, you can, you can just take the logo out, right? You can build multiple templates for different customers if you prefer, right? You can add marketing information about a promo code for a website, whatever is, you know, um, you know, you want this to look like and feel like for your customer is really up to you as a user, uh, but it is all inclusive as part of your subscription that you do pay. So um, what are the next steps here as far as those of you who are interested in, in talking to us a bit further about cloud, right? So first and foremost, we do need to set up a quick 30 minute call um, with one of our account managers that is underneath me. Um, we'll basically kind of gather some specific information from you. Uh, this information will help us not only uh, properly demo the solution if we need to, right? Um, so we can show you all the benefits that you get with a cloud application but more importantly, help build out the quote, right? Um, and basically call out some of those challenges you might be experiencing today, giving you some detailed pricing of what the licensing looks like, what the services would entail to get you implemented, and then um, get your commitment to moving forward from there and getting on our schedule, right? So again, you do have options there as well. And those two options are very simple, right? We allow you to self onboard, right? Um, we do have a set of instructions that we do provide to you. Um, you get a first 30 days are free, right? Um, to go in through the setup, right? Part of it. Um, so the quicker you can get things set up, the more time you have to test with, play around in the environment. Um, you'll activate the environment within that 30 day window at some point. Um, and then basically from there, um, you'll have access to our support portal where you can ask our team questions. If you happen to get stuck, um, they can answer you back um, and provide you the information that you need. Um, but I would not recommend self on board for any projects requiring EDI, hazmat, or any advanced setup options. Um, and the reason for this is because there are certain items in here, certain uh, processes that we follow, especially for EDI, and testing that goes into the various XML files that we create um, that uh, we wanna make sure is properly tested with the EDI providers. So you don't run into any issues or fines or fees that you may see from those partners in the future. So if it is a pretty basic setup, um, this is a great option for you with no cost associated to it. The other option is to doing it with our team, right? Uh, which is the more recommended option and I say recommended, right? Um, it's because we do this day in, day out, and many, many times during the day. Um, we're familiar with the implementation, the connectors and whatnot. Um, but again, uh, right now our timeline is booked out about four weeks, roughly, uh, to get you up on the schedule. Uh, and then you can anticipate another several weeks after that, depending on what needs to be done to be up and running, trained, the whole nine yards. 
Um, we, we do collect an implementation fee on the front end, right? So in order for you to get on the schedule, that implementation fee must be paid for uh, to get on our schedule. You'll fill out an S or, or complete an SOW, sign off on it, um, and return back an assessment form to us. And then our project coordinator will get that uh, scheduled for you with the implementation specialist. Um, and then same period of time, those after those first 30 days, we will activate the account, have you pay for your licensing at that time, and then you move on with Starship Cloud. Okay, so those are kind of your two options you have available. So what do we require from you from a cloud pricing standpoint, right? So we're gonna ask about number of packages per month, LTL shipments per month if applicable if you're doing LTL, how many locations do you have or company file connections you need us to connect to, right? If you need hazmat, right, enabled, we're gonna ask you questions around hazmat um, for configuration purposes, not so much licensing purposes, but more from a configuration implementation of that. EDI capabilities, if you do need EDI set up uh, with um, us generating XML files for various trading partners, we will have some questions around that for you as well. And then uh, lastly, the number of workstations processing, right? Again, implementing the amount of, or uh, impacting the amount of time needed to set up the solution itself. So um, I would be prepared to, to have this information available for your account manager. So they can uh, get this info and get you a quote over as quick as possible. So we can get you onto that schedule um, here quickly for you as well. And thanking you for your loyalty and the business that you've done with us in these past uh, years um, with Starship.